on, on Sunday, April 7th, Barbara and I decided to see Bill Goldberg anyway, still in a state of euphoria from our great success, we thought. Bill had listened to our story intently, and when it was over, he asked us, do we think we knew what happened? And I said, sure. Paul looked at the stuff, told Scientology where to stick it. Bill looked at me and smiled and said, well, maybe you ought to consider the fact that maybe Paul's a kick out, and that might cause you some problems a little later on. Well, I told Bill, no, 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 my son is too smart for that. He read this stuff and he knows what he's doing. I can, yeah. Yeah, sorry, folks. <laughs> when, when Paul returned home, we realized that though he was removed from Scientology physically, he was still a Scientologist. This was very disappointing. This was like winning the lottery and then losing the ticket. <laughs> Barbara and I left information critical to Scientology and cults all around the house, hoping he would be curious and read it. We also openly talked about cult awareness in front of him, to his great anger, but our enjoyment. <laughs> While Paul was in Florida, we told our daughter what had happened, and she insisted that we arrange for her to come home for a weekend to visit after Paul's return. In the interim, she did her own research and arrived home armed with information to share with us, and she was very supportive of her brother. Well, in the, in, the same way, in the same way that I didn't understand why Matt was so upset, I didn't understand why my sister was so concerned. As far as I, I was concerned, you know, my parents were deceived by suppressive people into thinking Scientology was bad, and that's the problem. Why is everybody else so upset? About a week later, after getting back from Florida, I, you know, having no school, no job to go to, I figured I might as well apply for a job. I answered an ad in Newsday, or the Long Island newspaper, I took a job for a company called Cobra, which also goes by the name of Impulse or Wholesale Warehousing Industries, WWI. And they sent me out store to store with merchandise, you know, uh, calculators, flashlights, selling all this stuff because I was going to get rich, be a, be a millionaire. And of course, every morning there's, you know, chanting and sales meetings. You know, you can get the idea. This time it didn't take us long to figure out what was going on. I called Paul's cult leader and told him, hey, we just dealt with the Church of Scientology. Don't you mess with me. Within an hour, Paul was home, and this time we had an argument. This was World War III. I told Paul that we really need family counseling. I respect his beliefs, but we have to learn how to live in the same house with different beliefs. He agreed to see Bill Goldberg, by the way, who is another American superhero. <laughs> and Paul agreed to give Bill one hour. After two hours, Paul decided he didn't want to hear anymore. As Paul left the room, I looked at Bill and thanked him for his help. And though he may not have helped Paul, he was a great help to Barbara and I. Bill just looked at me and said, Paul's not going back. I said, how do you know? He just shrugged his shoulders and says, I just don't, but he's, he's not going back. We all got into the car and took a long ride home, which to me seemed very uneventful. Well, actually, it was, it was quite eventful for me, you know, inside. Uh, what Bill did was, was actually very effective because at this point, I was still calling my parents suppressive. I was accusing them of being controlling parents. So Bill got my parents to go through my entire life. When you, when you joined the Boy Scouts, did we tell you that you couldn't do it? No. When, we, when you wanted to join the drama club in high school, did we tell you you couldn't do it? No. When you wanted to go to Hofstra University, did we tell you? No. When, we, when you chose your major, who chose your major? Well, I did. So the only times my parents have ever interfered in my life were basically two times, when I was involved in Scientology, and then a month later when they got me fired from Cobra. You know, two incidences does not exactly make parents controlling parents. And as Bill so eloquently put it, he said, Paul, these are two organizations you really don't want to be involved with. And, uh, and, and then, uh, he, and so that, that really, you know, kind of put me in my place. And, and then Bill was very fair about it, though. He was, he was more of a mediator than, than a therapist or a counselor. He actually told my parents to back off. You know, he suggested my parents might be, you know, promoting the problem by pushing this cult awareness stuff on. He said, back off, you know, give him room. And, and, and my parents took his advice, and, and that was very effective, too. By the end of my session with Bill Goldberg, I came to the realization that I could not be a Scientologist ever again, even if I wanted to, because at that point it just occurred to me that I just knew too much, and I'd never be able to, to, to buy into that again. And, and I snapped, and I entered this incredible grieving period, you know, identity crisis, you know, what the heck, you know, who am I, what do I do now? I mean, I was, you know, I was totally lost. And it took several weeks to, to get over this. I started reading everything I can get my hands on. And after several weeks, I finally began talking about it, you know, to my parents. I told them I had no intention of going back. And then I decided to return to school. 
And even after I returned to school, it, told, it still took me a, probably a full year before my natural personality came back. And there were other obstacles as well. Uh, Scientology, I spent so much money, maxed out my credit cards, I had a bad credit rating and I lost my credit card. It took me about three years to get another credit card after that and my credit rating is still you know, not perfect as a result of that because it takes like seven years for that stuff to go away. And uh, I also had a problem you know, when it came to my friends. When I went back to school, because I dropped out of school in mid-semester and didn't really tell anybody where I was going. I just said I got a great job and didn't say what it was and I left. Now I came back and I had to explain you know, what was going on and that certainly wasn't easy either. But the thing that really helped was my parents were being very outspoken. They were talking about it. They were getting involved in CAN. And I started modeling my behavior after them. I saw them speaking out about it. They, well, then it's okay for me to speak out about it too. And that was actually the best therapy of all was just speaking out about it. About a year after I got out of Scientology, I attended an AFF conference, and that did absolute wonders. I actually went to the AFF conference thinking, I'm already recovered, I don't need this conference. When the conference was over, I was like, oh my God, I wasn't recovered, I feel so much better now. So that was actually a terrific help too. And now, even though I, I'm fully recovered, and, and I, you know, I got my life back together, and I just graduated school last year, I'm still going to speak out about Scientology, and my parents are going to continue speaking out about it, and we're going to keep speaking out about it and helping other people as long as Scientology gives us a reason to. And that's the end of the story. Thank you.